Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This is a fun show where we make board game pieces and components, or in this case boxes, <laughs> in edible form. This is the third cake in a three cake series that was all tiered together to make a stacked cake. First was the mirror glazed dice cake, the Bowstar Galactica case, and now this is a puzzle box cake. This was made for Games Unlimited, which is a Pittsburgh store that recently opened a brand new huge location. So Pomegranate is the owner's favorite puzzle company. So I decided to go with the Eclipse by Alma Thomas, which is a very beautiful puzzle. And it was simple enough that I could try and recreate by drawing it. So here's how you make it. The first step in creating your cake is to get the cakes the right size. So I used a piece of cardboard that I covered in aluminum foil. And I used that to trace these very thin pieces of cake. And these little squares I just made are for the dice cake. You can see the link below. Only a little problems. <laughs> now is the fun part, or something that's not so fun part. Covering it all with peanut butter buttercream. Yum yum yum. I used my cutting board to get off of the parchment paper so then I could flip it over onto the cake. It mostly worked. Then you get to add more buttercream. You can feel the sugar high from here. And well, here's the last layer. I made it. Just barely. Now I'm going through and making the sides all even. And doing a layer of icing. The nice thing is that it's covered in fondant, so it didn't have to be as pretty looking. Here's some plain white fondant that I rolled out and for this one we just need to cover the top because we're going to use a different color on the sides. It may have stuck a little bit so hopefully you have more luck. This is my first big fondant project. Now that it's on here I smooth it out and I'm trying to cut it so it lines up with the edges. So this way when I put the blue around it it matches up. Here's the blue that I made a light blue color to match the box. And I'm using a quilting square to get straight lines. It's actually a lot of fun to roll it up and then roll it around the cake. It's a lot more satisfying than just putting the piece on top. So now that it's around there, I'm smoothing against the side and try to make it so the top and the sides all match up. Now it's ready for decorations. This dark blue is for the little corners. They have the logo on the corners of the cake. Once again, using my quilting square to get some straight edges. Here's my attempt to try and cut very small pieces out of fondant. I'll get better. <laughs> I didn't stab myself, so I think it's a win. And at least a little bit looked like a puzzle piece. Now to make the artwork for the top. I use this as just kind of a stencil to figure out how big I wanted the main artwork to be. And this way I had to worry about bending and help it stay straight. I used a bowl to just get a circle. Which when you look at the picture, it focuses around this big circle in the middle. Here's where I attempted to make it look like they were the actual circles in the picture, but they kind of went going sideways. But this is still a fun project with edible markers. You'll see it kind of swerves to the side. But now you just get to fill in all the extra lines. So much yellow. It's a very pretty puzzle. I'd like to see it in person. Now we're on to orange. Lines, lines, lines. I think I was decorating this while I was playing D&D, &D, so it's a nice 
a little side project. It was like I was doing a coloring book. And that's probably why the lines are in his centered. As you go through, you could tell that I changed my approach. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just out in, in out, whatever gets it done. But it has a lot of pretty colors in it. It's a very pretty puzzle. And now I'm just like, what do I do with this big blob that <laughs> shouldn't be here? <laughs> and then you get to do it again as two smaller ones. So thankfully those are a lot quicker. By the same thing where I use cardboards this way, they would stay flat. There's my little eclipse centers. I learned from my big one and also knew that it didn't have to be as perfect because they are little on the sides. Now it's time to put it all together. So those are the dark blue pieces I cut out in the beginning. And I just used three different ones to create the box corner look. And there's one on the upper left and the bottom right. So I had to do it for two separate corners. And this corner is actually going to be partially covered by the big eclipse thing. So I didn't have to worry about it as much. And here we go. Put on the puzzle. Very satisfying. Like, ta-da. And here's the little 1,000 we cut out because it's a 1,000 piece puzzle. And I use a little water underneath it to help it stay. Now we're putting the little eclipse pieces on the side. Each corner has one. Well, each side has one. One thousand. And after cutting out those one thousand, I did not want to cut out the words. So I just wrote the words on the top. For watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. If you want to see the other two cakes that are included in this three tier cake, see the link down below. And while you're down there, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. Let me know in the comments if there's any other games you'd like to see featured on the show. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye!